everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The United States Air Force has 5,217 aircraft in its fleet, operating from 59 active duty bases nationwide. These aircraft not only travel locally, but also extend their services to roughly 750 U.S. foreign military bases spread across 80 nations around the globe. It is impossible to fly aircraft with limited fuel capacity to foreign bases. Therefore, they are accompanied by gas stations in the sky, known as aerial tankers. The aircraft with a short fuel supply can be refueled via aerial refueling. The process begins with both the tanker and the receiver closing in on each other while maintaining a distance of 100 feet or less to overcome turbulence. Both the Air Force Reserve and the Air National Guard are comprised of airmen who train part-time until called upon for duty. The aerial tankers aren't used until a need arises for an overseas mission. Hence, the task of operating and managing aerial tankers is assigned to these part-time airmen, reducing overall personnel and operational costs. The KC-135 takes off like any cargo aircraft, such as the C-5. However, the takeoff distance and speed may vary due to its specific role and design. Before taking off, the tanker goes through pre-flight checks. The crew ensures that the aircraft refueling boom, fuel pumps, and valves are up to the mark. On the other hand, the pilots ensure all instruments, controls, and systems are ready for takeoff. Fire check coming out here. Once everything is counter-checked, the pilot proceeds to take off and the tanker disappears into the skies in no time. To transfer the fuel to the receiving aircraft, the tanker uses a 30 to 50 foot long rigid tube known as the boom, which is an extendable and maneuverable pipe-like structure equipped with a fuel nozzle. A boom operator is responsible for transferring fuel from one military aircraft to another. However, there are several possibilities for mishaps during mid-air refueling, which requires the boom operator to make split-second decisions to avoid disasters. The boom is typically used to refuel larger aircraft such as the C-5 Galaxy. Successful fuel transfer requires efficient communication between the tanker's boom operator and the pilot of the receiver aircraft, while the boom extends and attaches to the receptacle of the aircraft. Once the fuel is transferred, the tanker disconnects the boom from the receptacle, and both aircraft continue to fly on separate paths. The C-5 Galaxy features a unique landing gear system 
which allows it to land on unusual runways while carrying heavy cargo and personnel. At maximum gross weight, the C-5 requires a landing distance of 3,900 feet. What's more interesting is the variation in the aircraft's speed as it lands, reducing from Mach 0.77 at the peak to 135 knots at 1,500 meters from the ground. Sometimes when it lands, the pilots find it tough to stop a C-5 Galaxy due to its size and weight, which forces them to apply reverse thrust to decelerate the aircraft. In addition to the aft door, the C-5 Galaxy features a nose door, which allows ground crews to load and offload cargo from both ends simultaneously. Although opening and closing the nose door is a multi-step process, it happens surprisingly fast, mainly because both the nose door and the front loading ramp are operated with powerful hydraulics. The C-5 can kneel on its landing gear, which facilitates the loading operations, mainly because kneeling presents the cargo deck at truck bed height almost six feet off the ground. If the cargo deck were not lowered, the ramps from the deck to the ground would have a crown at the top. This would prevent wheeled vehicles from driving into the cargo compartment as they would high center on the crown. However, the wheeled vehicles can easily enter the cargo compartment if the C-5 kneels on its landing gear. The C-5 Galaxy is also used to transport the James Webb Space Telescope. Loading the telescope in the cargo compartment is a step-by-step -step procedure. The telescope is kept inside the Space Telescope Transport Air Rail and C, or STARS, container, which is then transported from the facility to the C-5 aircraft via a truck. A team of engineers set up wooden surfaces under the container while loading it onto the C-5 aircraft. The C-5 Galaxy cannot take off without pre-flight inspections, which are conducted by dedicated crews on the ground. These crews carefully inspect each electrical and mechanical component to ensure everything is in working order and release excessive liquids, such as clean water from the sinks from a valve below the aircraft. A tanker truck arrives at the airport and the crew refuels the aircraft for the next flight. After pre-flight inspection, the ground crew gives a green signal to the pilots for takeoff. However, as it taxis toward the runway, the C-5's engine starts to make shrilling sounds, mainly because of the power transfer unit, or PTU, which transfers hydraulic power from one aircraft's system to another.
The ground crew wears headphones to cancel out the noise, which can be very irritating at times. In the 1980s, the U.S. Air Force started developing C-17 aircraft to replace the aging C-141 Starlifter and relieve the C-5 from some of its duties. After flying for the first time on September 15, 1991, the C-17 has been fulfilling the airlift requirements of the U.S. Air Force. In addition to deploying troops, supplies, and vehicles to combat outposts in war zones, the C-17 transports aviation fuel and fuel bladders. sets up a fuel bladder inside the C-17's cargo compartment and monitors the gasoline fumes that linger inside the aircraft. After securing the fuel bladder inside the cargo compartment, the crew transfers the JP-8 jet fuel from the HEMTT fuel servicing truck, which can transfer almost 2,500 gallons of jet fuel. The pump operator remains alert to terminate the transfer in case of any emergency. It takes around 20 minutes to fill the fuel bladder. The fuel technicians adjust the restraint straps on the fuel bladders to prevent surge, roll or shift in weight distribution. The USAF has supplied fuel to various combat outposts over the years. For instance, in January 2011, Three C-17s dropped the largest resupply of fuel ever to our remote military outpost in Afghanistan. Soldiers hustled for two days to secure 20,000 gallons of fuel, which contained a 30-day supply of JP-8 fuel. Each C-17 aircraft dropped 40 bundles, with each pallet housing four 55-gallon drums of fuel. C-17 can also refuel its own tank with the help of an aerial tanker like the KC-135, which has been an important asset of the United States Air Force for the past six decades. An aerial refueling mission goes smoothly with clear radio communications between the KC-135 and C-17 Globemaster. Aerial refueling is an essential part of modern warfare, which allows extended flight times and operational reach for other aircraft. US Air Force continues to conduct air refueling missions with various combinations of tankers and aircraft to ensure each aircraft can be refueled with the help of a tanker during foreign missions. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.